Hello and welcome back to Algebra, the video course where we talk a lot about groups and their properties. And in today's part 11 we will look at an example for groups and subgroups, namely we will look at the so-called Klein 4 group. However, before we start with the whole discussion, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter, you can download additional material with the link in the description. For example, you can find PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos. Okay, so now before we start with the Client 4 group, let's recall what we have learned in the last video about subgroups. So we know if we have a group G and a subset H also forms a group, we call it a subgroup of G. In other words, H is just a group in the larger group G. And soon you will see that we will talk a lot about possible subgroups of a given group G. Hence it might be useful to introduce a short notation for this. In the case that H is a subgroup of G, one often writes that H is less or equal than G. So in our context here, this simply means that H is a subgroup of the group G. Moreover, please also recall that we have learned in the last video what we have to check for a subgroup. Indeed, for any non-empty subset H in G, we have the equivalence that H is a subgroup of G if and only if two conditions are satisfied. And both conditions are really simple. The first one just tells us that the binary operation is well defined on H and the other one tells us that all the inverses are included in H. Okay, with that knowledge in mind, let's discuss the so-called Klein 4 group. It has this name because it only has four elements in it. So we already know it's an abelian group. And in fact, it can be simply defined by the symmetry group of a rectangle. And at this point you already know how it works. The symmetry operations give us the elements of our group. For example, the identity element E just does not do anything to the rectangle. However, we can definitely do more. For example, we could rotate the whole rectangle by 180 degrees. And let's call this element A. So you see, we get the same rectangle out, but the enumeration of the vertices changed. And obviously, this is exactly what we mean by a symmetry operation. On the other hand, we can do a horizontal reflection, where we mirror the whole rectangle on this axis here. So there we have our element B, and this is the rectangle we get out. And now in addition, we can also do a vertical reflection. And there we will reflect with respect to this axis here. Hence the enumeration we get out is this one and let's call our operation C. And that's it. These are all the symmetry operations we can do in such a rectangle which is not a square. So you already see we have our four elements and now let's put them into a table. So we want to know what happens if we combine two of them. So we can write E, A, B, C on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then as always, because we have the identity element E, we will not change anything in the first column and in the first row. In other words, we only have these nine entries here, which are interesting for us. So now what happens if we apply A twice? Nothing, we get E out again. And indeed the same we have for b squared and c squared. And now you can easily check here, if we apply a and then b, we get out the vertical reflection c. So here we have c and in the same way we get b here. And indeed you can simply do everything here simply by applying the symmetry operations. And there we have it, this is the whole table which we can see as the definition for the binary operation here. So you only have to check the associativity here. And there we can simply go through all possible cases and we see it works. And that's it. Now we have a well-defined group and it's called the Klein 4 group. So let's write this down as a short definition. So we have the set G with four elements. 
and the binary operation given by the table. And these two things together give us an abelian group called the Klein 4 group. So it is of order 4 and each element in it is its own inverse. Indeed, this is what we see here on the diagonal. And now one common notation for this abelian group is just K4. And you might already guess that we also want to talk about the possible subgroups of K4. And in order to do that, we can use the proposition from above, but we can also simplify this for finite groups. This means now we assume that the order of our group G is finite. So this is the only additional information we put into this proposition here. Therefore, we still assume that H is a non-empty subset in G. And then we still have the equivalence from above. H is a subgroup in G if and only if one condition is satisfied. Indeed, the first condition is already sufficient for having a subgroup. So this makes everything much simpler because it means you only have to check that the binary operation is well defined on H. And then you already know that H is actually a subgroup of G. And here I can tell you the proof of this statement is very simple. In fact, going from left to right, we have already done with the proposition above, so we have discussed it in the last video. Hence, let's show that everything follows from this one condition. And as I've already explained, this one condition just tells us that the binary operation is well defined on H. So the first conclusion is that H with the binary operation is a semigroup. And since H is a subset in G, it's also of finite order. And moreover, we also get from the group G that both cancellation properties hold as well. So as a reminder, in a group we always have that we can cancel an element from the left hand side or from the right hand side. Therefore, we definitely have these two implications here inside the group G. But now we can simply choose A, X, Y and B from the set H. However, these elements still live in our set G, so these implications are still correct. In conclusion, our semigroup H also has both cancellation properties. And now we can use what we have learned in part 6, namely that the cancellation properties already define a group. But please don't forget, this only works if we have a semigroup of finite order. So part 6 is applicable here and we get that H is a group. And with that, the whole proof is finished. And now as promised, this proposition we can use to look at the subgroups of the Klein 4 group. So we can say this is the important example of this video. So here we take the same names as before. So we have the Klein 4 group with the four elements E, A, B and C. And now I can already tell you a subgroup H1, namely the one that only includes the neutral element. Indeed, we know this is always a subgroup of every group. Therefore, more interesting would be one with two elements. And in fact, we see that if we take E and A, we have a subgroup as well. We can check that with the proposition above, because we cannot leave the set H2 with the binary operation. Because A with A brings us to E again. And this implies that we can also take B or C instead of A here. In other words, we get two more subgroups. And moreover, with the table above, you can immediately check that it is not possible to choose a subgroup with just three elements here. Therefore, the only remaining one is the full group G. And now we can simply count our result and we see we have exactly five subgroups for the Klein 4 group. So the Klein 4 group might be small with just four elements, but still we find additional structure in it. And with that you already see an idea for the general characterization of groups, we just look at the subgroups of it. So by analyzing the subgroups, you might learn a lot about the group itself. 
and how to do this in general, we will discuss with the next videos. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.